Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. Welcome to Real Life, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) What is going on right now? I think that I'm in love with Matthew Kachuk. Are you guys all drunk? Welcome in. This is episode 335 of the Real Life Podcast, Skeleton Crew, because Jay and Chalmers are in Mexico getting drunk, so it's just myself. Wanye and bag milk, and Wanye is tinkering with his headphones. Well, there, I can hear some parts, but I can't hear everything. See, those are the shitty headphones I was talking about on 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 Radio on Friday. Well, that's all right. We need to get Wanye better headphones. Well, we don't need to. Yeah, absolutely. You oh, need to be able to hear yourself. Well, hey. Those will work perfectly. Yeah. See, it's we could have figured this ones, all out before we started recording. Yeah, yeah. Those oh, ones. It. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey. See, those ones, like, if you're half plugged, then you hear that's things. That's exactly what was happening. Mm-hmm. Half plugged. That should be the name of the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Episode 335 brought to you by the HGA group. Exciting stuff planned with them coming up. So that's always fun. Anyways, um, so yes, yeah, just the three of us. We didn't really do a lot of prep. We no. just kind of said, Bag Milk and I are wearing matching hoodies. I just have a Bills jersey over mine. That's exciting. We're not really matching then. Well, kind of. Uh, treat your DFO hoodie with respect, sir. <laughs> it looks good with the red, though, because there's lots of white. In I agree. You look great right? today. Thank you. The Oilers, uh, boy. By judging on the temperature of the fan base, you wouldn't tell that they're 16 and 7 what or whatever. What the hell I is the- going on, everybody? Calm the fuck down. I cut the beat, cla- beat cast off at like 15 minutes last night. That unprecedented. I was just so irritated. They played First the of all, I was irritated with the way the Oilers played. Then I was irritated with people thinking the season's over. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, you know what? It's 9 o'clock. I'm going to go live my life. I don't want to do this. People were blaming Connor. Can't win with Connor. Oh, my God. Like, Man, Good. I'm mad, too. But like, let's not like like Wanya said before we started recording. Do they not remember the Aikens era and what it was like to watch that? We need to start keeping receipts of these people. We need to start screenshotting preposterous tweets like you can't win with Connor, and then we need to watch for these people saying positive over the top shit a week from now, and we need to say like how it started, how it's going. You know those side by side comparisons that bring society to their knees. Yeah, we need to do that. Shaming then, essentially. Let's shame them. Yeah. Bring back public shaming. People lipping off Oilers Nation on Twitter during the games. I'm not having it, man. I'm not having it. I'm not having these grumpy ass dudes being like, as I've been saying all season. Oh, have you been saying it all season, Carl? I missed it. I guess I missed your fucking soapbox preaching. That's what I mean. Like, so don't come into my post game show, the B cast. I'm trying to fuck with me. No, man. I'm not having it. I'll just cut. I'll just take my ball and I'll go home. Yeah. I was already home. Or ban all that I dude. The ball. I should just start banning people. That's what I do, man. Mm-hmm. I don't take this shit. I don't get into fights with people, but I'm also not going to run the risk that you twice come across my timeline spouting crazy nonsense. Yeah. I just, like, they, they're they clearly not a perfect team. I think we kind of knew that the whole time when they were winning early So in we're going to be miserable unless we go 82-0 and 0 and 16-0 well, and 0 to a cup win? Yeah, like a little adversity is never a bad thing. Obviously, you'd want to win every game, but it's not realistic. And even when they were winning all those games, we all kind of said, like, hey, you know, they're not really the clear cut better team in a lot of these, but they're finding ways to win. And that's good. You got to bank points. We knew coming into the year, the roster wasn't perfect and all that. And then we started losing defensemen. (laughs) Yeah. All of them missed essentially. So you're still missing Keith and CC, basically your second pair. Just got back. CC, arguably one of the better best defensemen the others have right now. Oh boy. That's a whole different podcast. That's three thirty six. What's up with that? I'm not even saying that as a slight to the others. I think just, he's been better than anyone expected. Oh, I see. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, it's just a, it's a bump in the road here, and it's probably going to get worse over the next week because their schedule is hard as shit. Like they got to go what Minnesota, Toronto, Carolina, yeah, and it's Boston are their next four. Yep, like those are four teams that can. Fuck. Well, they got Nurse back, right? That's a big, 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 sure. big hole, big boost. Yeah, it's just if they play like they did against Seattle and L.A. against those teams, they'll get their they'll get their. But they won't. Back. Well, that's the thing. Not. Like I just don't understand why the Oilers can't start on time right now. Because we're not perfect, man. Gregor did an article at OilersNation.com. Never heard of down it. down the numbers on how this has happened. This hasn't historically been a thing over the last few seasons, even under Dave Tippett. Just this year, the Oilers have allowed four, uh, the first goal 14 of 23 games. It's just weird. Last night, two minutes in, Kings score. Friday night, 49 seconds in, Kraken score. It's just boys. We need to get some coffees down there. Yeah, man. We need to get... I want to check in on what the tunes the boys are listening That's to pregame. That's a good point. It's a very good point. Are they, like, right now they're playing. They're starting the game like they're listening to Leonard Cohen instead of Tiesto. <laughs> and now Sarah McLaughlin to play us onto the ice. <laughs> yeah, that's Sweet what it's surrender. like. Sweet surrender. Sweet surrender. That's what it's like. Is that what we're going to come out to? We need to create a vibe in there. They need to hire a vibe ambassador. This is what I was thinking about last night. Okay. Somebody who comes in. 
Brings shakes the trees. Ooh. Yeah. Like a flavor flavor? Exactly. They need flavor flavor. He goes, yeah, boy, in everyone's face one at a time. Hits the Tiesto mixtape and away they go. Mm. What the fuck are you guys listening to Sarah McLaughlin for? No, Sweet no, surrender. no, no. I just don't like the it's it was one of the mailbag questions this week. It was like, why do they not start games on time? And I don't think it's a coaching staff thing. I don't believe in that. I don't think a coaching staff of a, you know, mil, a team full of millionaire athletes, like Dave Tippett's job isn't to come in there for every game and give them a rah, rah speech. Like that's, that's not how it and works. And you don't make the NHL by somebody coming in and telling you. How well, they yeah, coaches don't even really move the needle that much on a night to night basis for like morale and effort. No, like, I think they don't. Very rarely in a ma- regular season game. Can they even possibly deliver a speech where they're like, we will show up on time. Like it mm-hmm. just is what it is. Like the, the players just have to fucking play better. I'll start. Maybe part of it. If you want to blame the coaching staff, maybe they're not like, prepared from a game plan standpoint with what they they want to execute. But like, I don't know if I really buy that either. It's just the the team. I think it's on the guys in the room and on the ice. Like they got to figure that shit out. Follow me on this one, Tyler. Yeah. Dave Tippett, when you listen to him speak, Mm -hmm. a little bit boring. Mm. Yeah. Maybe he should try some fun voices. Yes. Some character acting to lead in. Maybe a mustache wouldn't hurt. Mix in a stash. What are we doing here with the mustache? Why is it not here? Even in November, he didn't grow a stash. Disrespectful. He says Mrs. Tippett doesn't like it. That's always been the rumor. That can't be true. I don't believe it. If you look back to when they met, he was rocking a full stash. Of course. See, what you love, you ultimately come to hate. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. You're like, that's a good looking man with a full Tom Selleck mustache. And then 30 (laughs) years of being married to him when all these MILFs are coming up to him and like Boca Raton and being like, fine stash, coach. Can't have that. Get that stash out of here, says Mrs. Tippett. Mm -hmm. Make him 2% less sexy. Saves him about 35 minutes of his day of being flirted with, I think. You can get mad at your Lamborghini for having a spoiler on it, or you can just admit that you married a superior piece of equipment <laughs> and let that be, you know? Yeah. See, I told you we could find the ditch. I agree with that. Yeah, that was the motto coming into the show, right, Bag Milk? You said we're going to find the ditch? Yeah, since it's only Wanye and yeah. I and you, yeah. and this I, is the easy one to steer into the ditch. Coach oh, Tippett's wife's no insecurities for 45 minutes? Yes. Is that, yeah. And why he needs to bring back a mustache and try character voices. That will unlock the Oilers. Well, to think that you do this Let's show go. and a real one, your M-Check. That's yeah. got to be the duality of man. Much different pace when you're doing like the hard-hitting 23-minute show with Frank where it's like, I'm hearing this from this insider source. Mm-hmm. And then you got like someone breaking down like Corsi and all this shit and like all these zone exits and entries. And then you come here and it's like, does Dave Tippett's wife hate his lip hair? And is that causing the Oilers to start slow? Well, mm-hmm. the insiders on this side of the table suggest yes. Or OilersNation.com. Mm-hmm. We were cited earlier in this podcast as a place someone read news. Yes. Mm-hmm. So where you find it. Fair enough. All and right. That, like last night. That what pause. do you make? I'm curious what you're thinking. Uh, we didn't ask you about it. What do you think about William Lagason, like uh, Alan Walsh oh. last night? Uh, okay, well, one, it's Alan Walsh's okay, so job. First of all, what happened for so, those of us who aren't paying attention? Because I do know, but some of us aren't. Yeah. Alan Walsh sent out a tweet. He's now, the, who is Alan Walsh? He is the player agent for William Legacy. Okay, and has Oilers he been defense. sassy on social before? Yes, he's the one who uh, sent out the infamous sword through the back of Marc-Andre Fleury. Okay, so he represents Marc-Andre Fleury and Billy Legs. Also, yep. shout out to Weathers Nation's NHL Sid for doing a Legacy version of that photoshopped last night with the sword going through Lagasin. So Very funny. funny. You really have to be plugged in to know what that Absolutely. was. Absolutely. The best. So Alan Walsh tweets out, Oilers defenseman William Lagasin had his best game in the NHL Friday night. What happens? Dave Tippett never told him he's out tonight. Didn't tell him to skate with the scratches. He finds out just before the game. It's a kind of disrespect from a coach that destroys teams. He then follows it up with, William Lagasin has done everything asked of him by the organization. Players get scratched and have no issue with that. All we ask is to be treated with respect, and Dave Tippett has shown he doesn't care to do that with players. I think respect is a funny term to throw around in this conversation now, and maybe as a player agent, pulling back the curtain and exposing the inner workings of the team is none of your fucking business. Maybe that's a place to start out I mean, Alan. Maybe if I'm Billy Legs, I'm like, I should probably get a less lippy agent because I don't have the career of Marc-Andre yeah, Fleury to lean back on while he goes yeah. and pisses my team off. Well, that's and what that's... I thought about was just, it's so funny. Like, William Lagasin is a seventh defenseman. Yeah, why would you blow He's... him up as his agent? Like, let's just look at the left side of the Oilers right now. You got Nurse. You got Keith when he's healthy. You got Russell. 
You got Cuckoo when he's healthy. Now Broberg. Then you got nice. Broberg there. So we just on the left side alone, <laughs> we've now rattled off five, def- six defensemen almost. I know what de- defenseman seven needs, and that's his agent to make things way worse suddenly. And like, do you think that Dave Tippett's gonna hear about that? Because he obviously will. Do you think Dave Tippett's gonna hear about that and go? You know what? <laughs> Probably put Willie Legs back in the line. Like that's not helping his no, case. No, it's, it's not at all. You send Coach Tippett a nice ham. It's and like you say from the agent, please keep my boy in the league as I'm getting that rip off the top. Nice spiral ham. We mm-hmm. really go a long way. I think I just think the weird thing is that for William Lagason, I have I can understand why he would vent to his agent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then I would just be like, this is between you and I. Shut the fuck up. Well, no. your agent needs to be like, well, Billy Legs, I guess we need to try harder, don't we? <laughs> just like, huh? keep and working hard. You'll get your chance, all that stuff. And he was good on Friday against Seattle. Sure. But if you go back to the game against Pittsburgh, he was god awful. But that a, dude could not do anything. As a prospect, do not back up your best game in the NHL with getting healthy scratch the next night with your agent calling out the team on no. social. It's just not going to help anything at all. No, because now it's it's going to be the thing that follows William Legison around, right? Yep. And My favorite part about it, though, is if you don't mind, one Jason Strudwick chimed in on this because Strud's big Willie Lags guy. He looked great on the uh, intermission show. I don't he looks understand presidential, why, man. He I don't looks, understand why the Sportsnet doesn't have Strud's on more often. I agreed. Just his his demeanor, the way he speaks, the way the, he's sitting right in the middle, all cool. He's been everywhere and done everything. Get Strud's on there more. Strud says, I, unfortunately, probably own the NHL record for most time healthy scratch. The news has been delivered to me in many different ways, including a couple by a trainer. Even that didn't destroy the team. Exactly. <laughs> and I mean, I even heard that Jim Playfair might have told Legacy he wasn't going to play. Like, it's not Dave Tippett's job to handle every player he scratches with kid gloves. And, and not William telling Legison, your seventh D he's not playing tonight is not going to destroy the team, Alan. And like, also, uh, my thought was... Did he not look at the news that Darnell Nurse could be back in? Could be. think at some point, oh, well, if Daryl's back in the lineup, hmm, maybe I'm not. And again, like, Dave Tippett was pretty clear. He wanted seven defensemen to skate in warm-ups to make sure Nurse was ready to go. That's what they did. I'm sorry you didn't play William Lagason, but again, you're a seventh defenseman in the NHL. A month and a half or two months ago, you were put on waivers, my guy, and every team in the NHL could have had you at your minimum salary for nothing, and they opted not to do that. So again, I just I feel for him a little bit, I guess, because he, he, guy to play cause he played good on Friday, and sure. maybe he should have deserved another chance. But dude, this isn't helping. That's the life of a seventh defenseman. With yeah, the man. If you're an NHL player or prospect, and Alan Walsh, Walsh comes to pitch you on his agent services. I'd be like, aren't you that agent that makes everything worse for your customers and your clients? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm the guy. Remember when Flurry was having a tough time and I destroyed him? Yeah, yeah, I do that for Billy Legs too. If you could do that for me when I'm having a tough stretch in my career, I guarantee it. I don't get it. I don't get the approach. Doesn't make sense to me. Nope. Willie Legs, you're not gonna play tomorrow after this. I'll tell you that much. Because, like Tyler said, I don't think we're in a situation where Dave Tippett will just bend his knee to a tweet. Look, if he doesn't bend his knee to Mrs. Tippett insisting that he... Wait a minute, he did bend his knee. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll listen to a tweet. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see if Willie Lex is tomorrow. Yeah, if Mrs. Tippett Whoa. comes in the room and tells him off and says, you better put Billy Legs in the game, you better keep <laughs> that lip and hair free, bro. That's how you get Legs back in the game. Mm-hmm. Not telling Twitter. Yeah, I just... Yeah, it's not even like William Legs is a high-end prospect. Like, it's funny. Just, just, just like, a dude. Twitter is undefeated when it comes to fucking shit up. Oh, yeah. For people's employments, that is. Or just life in general. Go on. I just, I think about how many people post something on Twitter and it just kicks off a shit storm. And that's why Jack is now gone. He's just like, I'm out. Going to work on Square. Block. You're referencing uh, Jack, the guy who invented Twitter. That's right. Yes. Not Jack Michaels. He's still on Twitter. Jack Michaels is excellent on Twitter. He is. He's excellent in a lot of things. Um... I had something else to say. Oh, the Dave Tippett hate. I don't really get it. No, it's nonsense. Like, I see a lot of, he doesn't know how to handle young defensemen. And, Mm. like, Evan Bouchard's playing some of the most minutes on the team and doing, like, a great job this season. Um, But that's because he looks 45, though, so people don't understand that he's still young. But everyone's like, oh, Tippett doesn't know how to coach, doesn't know how to coach. Last time I checked, the Oilers are number one on the power play and number two on the penalty kill. And they've been pretty consistently a top five team in both those areas since Dave Tippett came here. And I don't, you, you talked about the Aikens era. Now people might be forgetting that. Remember how God awful the Oilers special teams always was before. How God awful they were at everything. 
Always? Oh, yeah, and listen, this season he's pushed a lot of right buttons as well. He's almost always made the right choice between the pipes. That goes back to Smith and Koskinen year one. Mm-hmm. Every, we'd be sitting here going, ah, I would go with Smith tonight. He'd go with Koskinen, mm-hmm. and Koskinen would play great. Then he'd be sitting there go, okay, he's got to go back to Koskinen. He'd go to Smith, and Smith plays great. He's always pushed the right buttons with the goaltending. Special teams are always great under him. And I think he gen- generally does the right thing when it comes to knowing when to go to the blender and when not to. Does he make some mistakes? Sure. Is the team starting slow? Sure. Is that his fault? Who knows? But for the most part, I'm fine with what Dave Tippett's done as an Oilers head coach. His one flaw is maybe that he always favors veteran blue liners or more often than not favors veteran blue liners. And, you know, he didn't like a guy like Caleb Jones. But at the end of the day, like, They've been a winning team under Dave Tippett, and a lot of the things that you can directly point to coaching, special teams and and the goaltending and the lines, he does pretty well with. No one wanted to give him any credit for Pooley-Arvey last year. I think it's also pretty funny that last night it was coming up on Twitter, it was coming up in the Beatcast, it was coming up in the comment section on the website of firing Dave Tippett, and I was like, when in NHL history has a team that is 16-7 and seven fired their head coach? Like, if this is where your line in the sand is, it's just, it's not going to happen, especially with Ken Holland. Yeah, especially with Uncle Ken. I just, it seems like people are forgetting. It's just a waste of time, really. Well, and like, what, is this team magically going to improve if, like, who's even, a, like, if they go hire Elaine Vino? well, no, that'd be a terrible hire, so probably a bad example. If they were to go get Travis Green, who I think is a really good coach, just kind of got a shitty deal in Vancouver with a shitty roster. Are they, are they at least magically better under Travis no, Green? Oh, man, one of the few oh. things Let's I bring know. bring Hitch back. One of the few things I know from the decade of darkness is that our revolving door of coaches <laughs> did not help the situation no, one drip. It did not. And our railroading of fr- fringe players out of town did not help one bit. Mm-mm. And had we had, take your pick, if you'd stuck with uh, Rennie for five seasons rather than having him be coached three of five in the revolving door, mm-hmm. we would have been better off because didn't Neil Yakupov have like seven coaches in four years and then yes. went like, to the KHL and married a rocket? That's a sad ending I can't tolerate. Like, how many coaches has Nuge had now? Longest serving of weather. He's been here a decade. He's probably had six, seven coaches. firing Coach Tippett, 16 and 7, Gregory on Twitter. What is interesting, though, and I wonder, is this is last year Dave Tippett's contract with the Oilers? If, let's say, what situation would they kind of look at what's going on in Bakersfield and be like, hey, you know what? Jay Woodcroft might need to deserve a chance here. Once we've won a cup, once we've won with established professionals, then you can start to think you have internal options. I don't think we're anywhere near that right like now. If they, get, if they were to lose 10 in a row or like go on one of those real bad stretches, like what we saw in Philadelphia. Philly, New York, yeah. although a different situation. Yeah, but like if the Oilers were to go on a real bad stretch here, and if we get to a point where they're like back at 500 we're not at some doing point this. this season. We're not doing this, your M. Chuck. We're not doing this. But I'm just saying. But like, we're not. That's when I'll have the conversation about like, okay, shit's broken. But we don't need to have that right now. It's not. They played like the, the frustrating thing is that the Oilers just had two really bad games against the sixth and seventh place teams Nobody's in their division. firing anybody. What the fuck? And those, you know, a quicker start corrects that. Both of those games. Both of those games. Remember when Stoffer texted Cates and Cates said, Mac T's not going anywhere, and then we all lost our collective shit for mm-hmm. about 45 days. Do you remember yep. that year, M-Check? Were you too mm-hmm. young? you remember that shit? Yeah. We're not firing the coach, you crazy people. Shout out to everybody, by the way, that who knows what F-M-N-F means. Oh, yeah. That's old school. Do you remember it's that? Way back no. in the day. Oh, everybody was just so mad at McTavish all the time that we just said, fine. Fire McTavish now, you fuckers. F-M-N-F is just... Yes, we assume Mac T needs to go. What's your other point? Because it was just like 90% of the comments <laughs> was, we got to fire Mac T. We're like, we understand. What else? That was a good acronym. Um, you brought up Nelly Yakupov a second ago. Yeah, I a good saw, friend of mine. I saw mind. a funny tweet pop up in my timeline. About- ja- Jack Hughes just got an 8 by 8 extension in New Jersey. No, $8 million. Didn't. No, he didn't. Really? That was a couple days ago. Oh, my God. I just I missed that. I'm going to now double check eight it. By eight, eight by eight? Yeah. Jack Hughes got the the big extension from the New Jersey Devils. Oh, he's going oh to be playing there for the rest of his life. 2029, 20, 2030. Not the rest oh, of his life. Eight by eight? Eight by eight. Too much money. Through, uh, this is courtesy of Chris Meany. Through 119 NHL games, Jack Hughes has 55 points. What? Oh, Nail no. Yakupov had that many <laughs> through 111 games. <laughs> what? <laughs> See, man, this tells me a few things. One. The Bring Devils Yakupov. are a Mickey Mouse organization, as yep. Gretzky correctly said in 1982. Mm-hmm. Two. Now, Yakupov could still be reclaimed, Oilers. Sign to a PTO. PTO. So, they're going to be paying Jack Hughes and Nico Heeshire 
Fifteen point two five million dollars combined. Heshire has three goals. In I swear games. it's like in the absence of good players, we'll just pay the players we have as though they're good players, and they'll turn into good players. That's the that's strategy. wild. That is a huge contract. It's too much money. That the de- that this Devils team to me, in a sad way, kind of reeks of the Oilers. Desperation. In like, in like the beginning of like the Taylor Hall era, right? Mm-hmm. When like Hall first got here and it's like, okay, we got the kids in place, right? Like the shitty years of their rebuild are done. Like the young talent's coming. But now it's just like Heshire and Hughes playing on the top line together. Not a lot below them. They're signing guys like Thomas Tatar for four and a half million dollars and like trying to fill their lineup with like these other random pieces. P.K. Subban somehow makes nine million dollars still. Oh my God. Like it's just it. They reek of a team that's stuck in this mushy middle. And the only real talent there is their kids and their kids aren't quite ready yet to be the centerpieces of an organization. It's a mess in New Jersey. But it relays back to Yakupov, which is why I brought it up. That's fantastic that one guy's just drummed out of the league with no ceremony. The other guy's rewarded handsomely for his eight by eight. Yep. eight by eight. That's bananas. It's crazy. Man, that's going to be rough when he's not scoring points and he's making eight schmill, you know? That'll, Except nothing that will, nobody in New Jersey gives a shit. Do they not? Like, is New Jersey a place where nobody's going to games right now? I think they're doing okay. I think they always I don't think they're do facing okay. the hordes, though, like they would be in a no. market where, like, he can get away with making eight schmill a year in New Jersey and people just kind of be like, mm. meh. Yeah. Remember when yeah. Putty wore a Jersey Devils on Seinfeld? Yeah, Yay! Of course. And they'll talk about that for two hours? Yeah, yeah. Gregor has, a, like, a framed signed photo of David Putty in his office. It sits behind him every episode of the DFO Rundown. What the fuck? <laughs> like, how do you even, like, get that, Gregor? Like, oh, buddy, it's hilarious. Is it if nobody else has laughed but you? I mean, I love Seinfeld. I'm a big Seinfeld guy. But to I'm the point like, you'd have a David Putty photo? No, not to the point where I'd have a David yeah. Putty. And that's why I'm just like, how do you even go about acquiring it? I think Gregor said he's like, oh, it's custom, custom framed. One of one. Putty's like, I remember that day. <laughs> First time I ever He was the it. only guy at my booth. He's just walking through Comic-Con, and there's a lineup for everything except the David <laughs> Putty autographed photo. Gregor beelines to him. Well, buddy, I didn't want to wait in line for all the good guys. <laughs> I just got Putty to sign something for me. Good Did enough. Did you see Shatner's line for Good that? enough. Oh, heck. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, let's give some love to DoorDash and Oodle Noodle. <laughs> Oodle Noodle in St. Albert is a weekly stop for me. Come, come on. We yeah. had three. I mean, I think we talked about this already. Yeah, we talked about it a lot yeah. last week. But It's anyways. still unbelievable. Hold, yeah. hold, hold your water okay. here before you. This is a Noodle Noodle ad, correct? Mm-hmm. Oodle Noodle number one. Continue. Noodle King number two. <laughs> uh, use the promo code Oodle2021 at DoorDash. Mm-hmm. Gets you $7 off an order of 30 or more. You can still use that up until the end of this calendar year. Oodle2021. DoorDash. Ding dong. Bing bong. Bing bong. F your life. How funny is that? So funny. Hey, my buddies and I first ran into that like three weeks ago. I showed it to you like yeah. three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And it was, now it's like everywhere. It's like the biggest thing on TikTok. But that bing bong, fuck your life. Oh, I very much enjoy when you said it to Jay the other day and he was really confused about it. Bing bong, fuck your life. <laughs> and yeah, Jay did not get it. That was a little bit of an old man moment from Mr. Downton. TikTok. Strange place. Some of my friends on Twitter keep me plugged in and it was mm-hmm. like the tweet was something like can you imagine being me this morning and coming to school and hearing bing bong fuck your life 800 <laughs> times before school even started and i'm like what are we talking about <laughs> what are we saying the whole like the the bing bong fuck your life thing is great but that whole original tiktok video the is guy just with the dog the guy with the dog yeah. but then there's an earlier clip in one of the originals like part one or part two where he's like hey i was thirsty your mom bought me a gallon of henny and he's just like <laughs> on the street there's one guy who just has one ski on <laughs> and he's on just pavement and the guy's like where are you going and he's like i'm skiing to coney island and the guy's like there's no snow on the ground he's skiing to coney island on the hard top <laughs> I'll show them all oh, the, the other. best. They're so great. just a guy in the street doing one guy in the street type. Yeah, thing. one guy just had like a speedo on, but his phone was like tucked in oh, yeah, to his front, it. and he was like, "Steve Jobs did not die for this." <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It's wild. It's a wild TikTok. Ah, the decline of the Western world. Hey, mm-hmm. Bill, it's good for a laugh on TikTok. It's inevitable, you know. It's getting clicks. <laughs> yeah, what'd you guys do when the world was ending? Ah, we giggled about it on social. Yeah. What else are you gonna do? Yell at the coach who's sixteen and seven and say we should fire him. Yeah. Look inward at your own deficiencies? No. <laughs> <laughs> Two more tweets, and I've solved this argument. You ever think that? Oh. You never This solved. is the one that's going to turn this You know around. what? I'm going to hit him with this, and this is going to be the first <laughs> argument ever solved on Twitter. I don't get arguing on Twitter, to be honest. Oh, man. You should have seen. I. So I had a beer league game last night, so I had to leave the Oilers game a little bit early. I, didn't, I wasn't watching when McDavid got kicked out, but I was following along on Twitter. 
So I see the replay. I watch the first replay of the McDavid hit, and I'm like, really? That's five? Two minutes. I, yeah, I was just, and then I just sent her a tweet, and I said, really? I know it's a penalty, but, like, is this five? And the thing just fucking blew up. Like, <laughs> everyone went nuts. Brownlee's, like, pissed at me in the mentions, being like, what are you talking about, your M-Chuck? And, like, Brownlee. 173 likes, like, almost 60 replies, and people were just, like, arguing like crazy in my mentions. And I was just like, wow, I... I just sent this out to be like, hmm, interesting call. Like we usually don't, we never see majors in the NHL anymore. And like for that to have been a major, I was like, okay, a little odd. Kempe goes and scores on the power play. Also odd. Um, but people were fucking livid about that McDavid call. If you had a major taken against you and you're in sufficient physical shape to score in the resulting power play, it shouldn't have been a major. Yeah. If you got and a major, you should be like, Stars Air Ambulance is flying you post haste somewhere. And, like, if, again, like, Kempe wasn't even in the sort of quote-unquote danger zone, I'd say, where you're, like, three feet away from the boards. And, like, no. McDavid, it wasn't, like, a direct hit to the numbers. He kind of clipped him on the shoulder. It was a penalty. Yeah, it's a penalty. But, like, it's for them much. to have reviewed that and been like, yep, he's gone. Fuck, there goes McDavid. And then Kempe lays there Bing dead. bong. Kempe lays there dead for a minute or two. Yeah. And then he's on the first power play unit. Get out of here. I was actually, last night, I was tinfoil hatting a little bit, and I was like, watch them suspend Connor. Obviously, it didn't happen. He didn't get a fine, nothing. I was like, watch them suspend him because the NHL is weird like that. Oh, yeah. How about the other night when the assistant coach took one to the dome and just kept looking at the iPad while they were stitching him up on the bench? Yeah. What the fuck? That was a lot. That was a lot. Like, that was, that was dude, a lot. was tough. There's been some weird shit this week, actually, hey? It has been weird. Did you see Matthews get, like, jumped by Dubois? No. Oh my god! I want, I'm going to pull up this. Speaking of ma- no more mustache, and yeah, no more. Ma- he looks weird without the mustache. I kind of like the mustache. Now, now I this need is the risk back. you run though when you ro- grow a greasy stash. Yeah. Is the people brain get used to it? Uh, yeah, I don't like it. This isn't going to be great on the podcast, but I'm going to show this to you guys anyways. You know who else looks good in a mustache? Uh, Escobar and Pablo? El Chapo. Mm. They all look good in stashes. Yeah. When I see El Chapo with no mustache, I remind reminds me of Coach Tippett. I'm still upset I can't grow one. It's very upsetting. Yeah, mine, that doesn't work well for me. I would get a really greasy duster if I could But that's one. the look. Yeah. One so day. anyways, yesterday, this is what happened between Pierre-Luc Dubois and Austin Matthews. Dubois is like on his back, like just fucking giving it to Matthews. I've seen something like this on the Nature Channel, I think. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> this whole thing happens here. It's not even done yet. Like now Dubois is on top of Matthews, gave him like three or four solid punches. Anyways, the officials came away from that and decided Matthews deserved a penalty. What? They got coincidentals for that. What? That's so weird. <laughs> like, it makes you just how? ragdolling him. I think it was Travis Yost today who tweeted out. He was like, the NHL rule book is not worth the paper it's written it's on. It's not. It's just so, it's, it's such a great sport. And to see the league ran like this where shit like that. And Austin Matthews hasn't drawn a penalty at 5-on-5 five five yet this year. Can you name a better hockey league? Well, I mean, no. <laughs> I just Talent thought you had a better wise. option. You're like, this is a joke. We but should it all is. switch to the BHL. Let's go watch the AJHL with our boy Liam. Maybe that's the solution. Yeah, um, check out the Crusaders. Yeah, go check out the crew. Well, nothing wrong with the AJ. I just meant I yuck about Liam. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Superior Tyler. I got no beef with Liam. Yeah, superior Tyler. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's insane how like, it's if a they totally, just called the rule book. But it's a totally different sport from game to game. Like, mm-hmm. it's wild. I don't know. And why you wouldn't want Connor to be able to kind of maneuver around and do some magic Or Matthews to, like, not get jumped by Pierre-Luc Dubois. I've seen it a a bunch of times. The NHL just, like, they want offense so bad, and they're talking about, let's make the goalie pad smaller. Let's make the nets Call the rules. Just call the rules. But if you're watching hockey on a day-in, day-out basis, and the refereeing is driving you to distraction, maybe look at that nature program Bag Milk was referencing earlier. Because this shit has forever been terrible and mm-hmm. will be terrible forever yeah yeah like i've given up on it changing it's just weird because like if you look at the nba yeah. if lebron goes to the f- if goes for a field goal twice or uh to the foul line i should say twice and he gets fouled again later in the game he's still going back to the foul line it's not like they're not going to call it it doesn't make any sense so what you're saying is you love the nba yes so are you going to stop being a fan of the Oilers and start like the new orleans pelicans i was thinking about it that for excitement? I was going to start Pelicans Nation. And Just I was for sheer network. excitement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, huh? I was, that was, that's the next step on the go agenda. Go Pelicans? I yeah, guess. go Pelicans. Yeah, they're great. All I love those. Pelicans. I love the way they swallow things whole. Oh, man, basketball is so exciting. Yeah. When the score is 182 to 180 and there hasn't been any cheering all game. That's just, so fun. I do like that they play music all game. 
And I, I remember one time going to basketball highlights. I went to a Golden State Warriors game in the Bay Area, as you do. I can't even remember who they played before they got good. I didn't know a single player on either team, and I couldn't log into the Wi-Fi for some reason, <laughs> and I literally <laughs> fell asleep for a brief time after a few of them <laughs> basketball beers. That's my NBA story. Never been to an NBA game. I want to. I want Whatever. to, too. I just want to see. I have a buddy who goes down to, for work purposes, he goes to Minnesota all the time, and he always goes to Timberwolves games, and he just says it's a great time if you don't give two thunderous fucks about what's going on on the Depends court. Depends on the in-game experience. Like you that said the game in-game experience to. is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, would you cheer for the Utah Jazz? Of course. Of really? I love John Stockton. Yeah, he's there. I honestly don't even know who's on the Utah Jazz now. Uh, Carl Malone, I think. Yeah, yeah. John Stockton's there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I think maybe Rudy Gobert. Is the yeah, name. Rudy Anyways. Gobert's there. I was just going to say him. I went for a massage for the first time in my life the other day. With Rudy Gobert? Yes. What kind of massage? It's important. Yeah. Uh, Front of the house or back of the <laughs> house? <laughs> I was thinking more so like, was it Swedish? Was it Thai? It was just a place by my house. My girlfriend booked us in for was like Was it a, medical or pseudoscience, if you catch my drift? <laughs> it was just like a normal like... <laughs> and this is where... You can't say stuff. Like <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. It was medical. Robert Kraft is very now, old. Don't you be looking at your wave signatures for where you're going to be <laughs> clipping my joke. <laughs> can't that keep that in there. That's funny. That's no. What? Bag milk ruling. Didn't he get charged for it? Yes. And then acquitted. Yeah. So Public yeah. domain. It's public domain. Mm. As though the Patriots are listening to this like, well, your M check warned him. What if we call him Cobbert Raft? <laughs> I didn't expect it to be as painful it was as it was actually. Oh, this is a real one. Oh yeah, you got yeah. deep tissue. Yeah, like a deep tissue. Like holy shit! I had like at one point because my shoulders all fucked up, right? My shoulders are bad. She was like pinching and just like sitting, like pinching as hard as she could, and like I had like my eyes were watering. Mm. I was like, oh my god, people! But I mean, I feel a little bit better, so I guess it's worth w- worth it. But in the moment, it was like people pay for this. That's why I love time massages. Those are evil. Really? They like dig knees and elbows oh. and stuff in, but it'll loosen the old goo up inside you yeah Ah, the old goo we're talking yeah muscles and such right 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 right, yeah yeah. um so what you're just gonna like edit out back for about 20 minutes Mm -hmm. are you now a massage guy i don't know i think you gotta go a few times you gotta think so yeah get a couple of different ones too like a swedish Mm -hmm. massage is very casual just relaxing yeah 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 or an aloe vera massage you get all slippery should I feel weird if, like, I want to put my AirPods in while I'm getting it? To your massage, do what you want. Yeah. Right. Are okay. you listening to yourself, though, on the AirPods? Because mm-hmm. that'd be weird. Just listening, listening back to, to real life. Yeah, just just frowning at all the outtakes. <laughs> but, like, I said that before my girlfriend and I were going, and I was like, I'm going to bring my AirPods. And she's like, no, you are not. She's like, you do not do that. You sit and relax. And I was like, what do you mean? Don't tell me how to relax. I was like, I can't, like, listen to music. And she's like, no, that's super weird. No. And then no, after no, going no. through the massage, I was like, that wouldn't have been weird at all. It's not like I spoke to my masseuse at all. Oh, so you and... You and Mrs. weren't even in the same room. It wasn't like a couple's massage. Well, like, so it wasn't, it wasn't. So, like, they had, like, a little divider that they, like, rolled back. Oh, that's in the good stuff. But we were, like, we were, like, eight feet apart. Like, our tables were, like, eight feet apart from each other. So, again, like, it's not like me and Amber were talking to each other or anything like that. Like, you just sat in your thing. Did you go six to midnight or no? No, I didn't actually know once. Oh, <laughs> I was now. Don't I tell was, me you're gonna leave that in. <laughs> I can't I was, diss Robert Kraft for a public domain <laughs> joke. I kept thinking about the George Costanza clip, and he's like, "It moved, it moved." Yeah. Anyways, massages. No, I think you need to get more than one. That's fair. A casual Swedish massage, deep tissue. Sounds like you got deep tissue. Having something in your life, whether it's you go to the sauna, you get a massage regularly. It mm. actually can do a lot over. I think so for you, right? I even think just mental health, having something where like you know for like an hour for sure. Chill. Like I didn't look at my phone once or anything. Like I just sat there with my eyes closed. Maybe I shouldn't put music or anything in because it was just like you're alone with your thoughts for like an hour. It was very very good in that sense. There's a documentary on Netflix that I love. Uh, if I'm just putzing around the house, I'll throw it on. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Inside Bill's Brain about Bill Gates. Of course, he does a thing where he just goes out and walks with absolutely nothing, just to kind of clear. So it's kind of similar to that. Yeah. That's how he thought of putting all those chips in us. He was on one of those walks. Yeah. Mm, He was like, hear me out. Pandemic. Chips for everybody. I divorced Melinda and start a band. Mm -hmm. Did he start a band? Absolutely. Google it. Yeah. It's weird that it's a Wu-Tang Clan cover band, but. One until your own check disappoints himself on Google and action. Did Bill Gates start a band? Electrocuted. No, stupid. (laughs) Nope. He did not. 
He did not start a band. His three favorite. Music I do like videos. His, his three favorite, favorite music videos. <laughs> his Weezer. favorite band is Weezer. Come on, no way. We're all Seventeen surprising facts about Bill Gates. He likes microchips. Yeah. Oh, you just uh, got stood up by the independence paywall. See, that's why others. You don't get to know that shit for free. If you I wanted know. to know Bill Gates' top five bands, we just post it there for we free. Just tell you for free. You don't pay us nothing. Mm-hmm. Weezer. That's a weird one. Bill Gates' favorite band, Weezer. He also calls U2 a favorite and says he's waiting for Spinal Tap to go back on tour. Oh, what year was this? 2016. Of course. Pre-pandemic, Bill. Yeah. Island in the Sun is a great jam. I was like, Bill's favorite band is Emergency Warning System (laughs) Alerts. (laughs) I bit really hard on the whole Bill Gates started a band. Steve, for real. um, Not Steve Ballmer, the other guy. Microsoft. He's a huge time guitar player. Oh, really? Oh, fuck. Who am I thinking of here? Steve, Microsoft. Not Peter Thiel. And he, he has like a huge yacht. He just passed. He owned the Seahawks. Paul Allen. Oh. Uh, Paul Allen is a like big time guitarist. Play with Paul Allen. Said he was record like level guitar player. Hmm. He jammed with like all sorts of wicked players. You ever play music? Like I you? used to play guitar. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. What about you? I have a lot of instruments. He's in my super house. musical. Really? Yeah, I have tons of instruments. I kind of thought you were little. I didn't think you were that big into it. Mm-hmm. I, have, I have five, six, seven instruments. And in you house. can like play them all like competently? No, oh. I'm not. No, I'm by no means am I competent on all of them. I just like picking them up and fucking around because it's exactly what you talked about where you checked out for an hour in the mm-hmm. massage. I'll just pick up something and fucking check out. Make for noise hour. for an hour? Yeah. That makes sense. I've, I've never touched an instrument really. Come to my house, we'll play. It's yeah. fun. You Why just not? make noise. I think it would be fun. It but is, I it's just, great. it's never, it's something I wasn't like introduced to in my childhood. Like you can learn, right? Did. Like when I learned yeah. to play the guitar, I was already 16 or 17. Mm-hmm. I just bought a guitar. That's how old I am. Well, there you go. Like was not being 19. Now when he says shit, I'm just like, <laughs> you know what, man? You're 25. Like you should know better than that. Yeah. Before I'm like, that's so cute. He's probably been in high school like an hour ago. I was shocked to find out Waz. Waz is older than me. Yeah, Tyler's still the baby in the company. But you're different, though, because you're like a prodigy. So everybody's like, I I imagine you being 12, sitting in front of the same fucking microphone, talking. There just was nothing plugged into it. (laughs) Yeah, it was like a hairbrush or something. (laughs) And you're texting Frank Saravalli on a light switch, and you're like, one day soon. Some kids play like air guitar in the mirror, but Tyler was talking into his hairbrush, pretending he was interviewing George LaRock. I was uh, I was sitting there the other day talking with someone, and they're like, oh, you're doing that show with Caroline Schved now. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. I remember I used to, when I worked at Jersey City in the mall, when I went to Nate, her highlight show would always pop up on the TV, and I'd watch it, right? So you'd watch. I took in a lot of Caroline Schved content. And I was like, man, if you imagine telling 17 or 19-year-old Tyler Uramchuk, hey, in a couple of years, you're going to be doing a daily or an Oilers game day show with her. 19-year-old Tyler Uramchuk would have been like, that's sick. Like, that's unreal. That's you so exciting. Jersey? <laughs> But then if you would have also told Caroline Schmidt at that moment, hey, in a few years, you're going to be doing a show with this kid who's working at a Jersey store. She would have been like, wow, how did my (laughs) career turn into this? Just imagine yourself at 17 or 18 when you're working at Jersey City, tuning out Caroline Schmidt during the the horoscope section of the pregame show. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. Although the crystals fucking worked the other day. Yes, they did. Because I, on the show, I was like, yeah, I think Darnell Nurse is going to score in his return, Caroline. And she was like, hover above the crystals or it won't happen. So I love that she brought this to the table. It just showed up with a whole mystical pseudoscience. Yeah, it's just another layer of interesting shit. Yeah. Different I, lane on the highway. I've often thought we should like approach different religious groups on a fun note and be like, do you want to come and do a special prayer for the Oilers? To, like cleanse them of the bad juju, but it went away without doing it. Yeah. Remember when we were thinking about getting like an exorcism or some shit? I do remember. You can that, hire people. Wasn't Gregor pushing for that too? Yeah, we wanted to get like a tribunal of major world religions followed by an exorcism followed by a bunch of shit, but then we just did nothing. Yeah. Well, I spoke to a couple actually. You did? Yeah. They were, were they like, like, we don't want to get involved in your nonsense? Like, you want to do what? <laughs> <laughs> Got to get one of them fringe religions like the snake charmers. They'll bite. Oh, get absolutely. It? Snake charmers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They play great tunes. What are you too? looking at, your Ram Truck? I'm looking at twiggerberries.ca where if you go right now, you can enter your email and spin this cool fucking wheel, and it gets you, like, a discount code. So you can get, like, 20% off, 10% off, free shipping. And all you got to do is enter your email and hit spin. And the Put in was at OilersNation.com and go for a spin. Let's see what was wins. Is that actually his email? Uh, oh. There's no way, right? No, no, we're just giving Twig and Barry's fake email addresses. You're in, Chuck. This well, is an ad. Well, I'm going to put it, his actual email then. Wazer? Hang on a second. I'll, I'll get it. I just emailed him this morning. <gasps> it's spinning. Hold on. Hang on. Hang on. This, this, is you win. this is super fun. 10% oh, oh. off. 10% off. There you go. Is there a good prize on the list? Oh, yeah. So he gets a little thing. Jeez. That's, oh, cool. that's cool. I Anyways, like that. How can we get that, that on Nation Gear? That'd actually be super sweet. We, we should, should talk get to that on Nation Gear. 
That but like it sweet. always ends on one percent off. Yeah, you get no money off a Bobby Nix burger with no pickles. <laughs> you pay twice the price for your order. <laughs> I saw a bunch of people bitching earlier in the year. They're like, the concession prices went up at Rogers Place. They definitely did not. There was some Oilers fans at the game in Seattle. Yeah, and I thought those prices that they were tweeting about was outrageous. Like a tall boy for sixteen bones. Especially because it's U.S. That is a same thing. When beer. I went to the Jays game this summer, that's how much a tall boy is there too. And I'm like, you get a 20 ouncer for 12 bucks at Rogers Place. I ain't complaining about that. I went to the Justin Timberlake concert at the Air Canada Center, and I was the only adult in the beer gardens, and it was like 20 dollars <laughs> for a beer for JT, and that was a while ago. Like yeah. The prices are whoo doggy in Toronto. It's insane. All has to go to Mitchie Marner. Yeah, I just I, I people complain about the concession prices at Rogers Place. I. I get that they're high, but like it's not like an exclusive Edmonton issue. No, if you want to have cheap food, you become an Atlanta Falcons fan. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, but shut up. The thing I love when people are like, oh my God, the popcorn, like the pizza is so expensive. And it's like, the game's only two and a half hours. You yeah. can just get Panago for cheaper before you go. Or bring a pizza, strap it to your leg with like yeah. shin pad tape. Mm-hmm. And then people are like, is your th- shin slightly larger than your other? No, they won't. And as long as you can have scalding cheese on your skin for mm-hmm. three, four minutes, you can eat a full medium pizza for the price of one and all. I've got a drainage issue. That's it's what I'd say. It's super easy to do. <laughs> what? Because I'm got blood pooling in my leg. That's gross. Pizza. Scalding hot. Anyways, yeah, I, that, I was thinking about that the other day too because, again, the Seattle thing reminded me of it. And then I was thinking about my time in Toronto this summer and I was like, man, it, everywhere is more expensive than Rogers Place. I'm surprised to go to a public event and find concessions prices to <laughs> well, be yeah. inflated. So I think the lesson here that Tyler's trying to tell you is to get banged up before you go to the Oilers game. Yeah, or like, you know, eat before you go. I even Come to Dog Patch, have yourself a delicious yeah. meal. Nation beer on it's tap. Pretty close to the rink. I had a buddy, your Amtrak, you'll love this. He used okay. to just put like a flask in his sock and he built a special cap with a soap dispenser at the end of it with a hose. He was like a MacGyver <laughs> type. Mm. And it'd come out the wrist of his jacket at football games. He'd just go like this and give us all rye in our drinks because it was pulling out of a. Mm. That's the way to do it. That's next that's, level. That, that was the level. best. He was mm-hmm. the best guy to go to football games with. Of course. Um, when I was at the Canada men's soccer match at Commonwealth, cold as shit that day. Um, the lady in front of me, she just looked like a sweet old lady. She was probably in like her late sixties, and then she pulled out like a Nestle plastic water bottle, and it was filled to the fucking brim with Fireball. Fireball, I was like, nice. I was Damn, like, girl. That, is, that is more than a Mickey, I think, of Fireball. And she polished it during the match. <laughs> Solo? It, it's chilly Damn. out there, man. It was insane. I was like, oh my god, like you are clearly going to be shit faced going home. She's like in her. I'm mean, probably retired. Drove probably. her seven grandchildren home in a family wagon, and well, probably that. not. But she took uh, the LRT. Wait, worried Robert Kraft's going to find out about that too? <laughs> Jeez, Louise! Uh, Robert Kraft has not reviewed this podcast. That should be a disclaimer. He hasn't listened to it once. Not even. I'm still mystified when you guys tell stories about being in the wide world and people listen to this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I had someone stop me in an Oilers game a couple weeks ago and was like, "Can we have a selfie together?" They're like, I love listening to the podcast. I which one, though? Do you always say which one? I usually do say yeah, which one. And yeah. this guy was like, the Oilers Nation ones. And I was like, all right. When people say that to me, I'm like, that doesn't matter. If they're like, oh, the um, Oilers Nation one? I'm like, but if you they say know. real life. Mm-hmm. They don't know. I'll I have an update episode. about some life stuff if you want to go into the ditch. So remember my neighbor? Yes. Oh, fuck. This my is new one. neighbor, right? So mm-hmm. they listen to this podcast. No, they did. Her husband know. listens to the podcast Bless his heart. And he heard your story he about... He heard my story about how I was walking around in my house nude when they were looking <laughs> at their house, and his wife saw me through the window, and then I said, I hope they don't buy their house, and then they bought their house, and then I fell down the stairs in front of them later that day. He was like, I wasn't sure if you were talking about the same house, but then when you mentioned falling down the stairs, like I knew that that was us. So I have somebody come out to the Wanye Manor to take a look at a broken appliance, mm-hmm. and this guy comes, and he's... Bizarre. I hope he's not listening to the fucking show. Probably but is. Super bizarre. Like, I think the thing he did to make his job interesting was when he would come on site to someone's house, he would try to piece together who they were based on what he saw. So he was, like, peppering me with questions that had nothing to do with my washing machine at all. It was super awkward. And then we go to leave, and the doorbell rings, and it's my new neighbor bringing over Christmas baking, which is super nice, and she, like, wants to shoot the shit. And the appliance guy is standing beside me like it's our house together, like, (laughs) waiting for her to finish so you can fucking talk about appliance shit. It was so strange, the three of us, that she just buggered off. And I'm like, who does she think that guy was? Like, who, if you go Well, now she'll know it was the appliance guy. Well, this is why I'm trying to tell the story. Ah. Because, like, he was a 
bizarre looking chap and she must be like what is the neighbor into and he just stood there like he was he wasn't dressed he just came to the door with me naked. with the doorbell no he wasn't naked that would have made an extra <laughs> but anyways so i just always love shout out to my neighbors your place specifically and just how one time you told me that neither neighbor knows what you do for a living no and i always thought that was so so funny because one they're professionals on one on oh, either yeah. side one side of my one year man used to be two doctors and they're like, oh, we were off doing doctor stuff all day. I'm like, oh, man, that sounds exhausting. The other day I was on Twitter was and told a guy to go F himself. <laughs> like, but no, these new neighbors are nice. Bless their hearts. Good Christmas cookies. But they must wonder what I, the hell I got going on at Wanya Manor. The answer is nothing good. But they know what you do for a living now, sort of. Yeah, we In met. It was kind of funny. I'll tell the story, whatever. Knowing that they listen makes it a different level of weird. But I'm like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. How are you? Yeah, good. If you ever need anything, I'm right over here, even though I couldn't help with anything ever. And then the, my one neighbor's just like, my husband reads your website in bed first thing in the morning, and he's so excited to live next to the Oilers <laughs> Nation guy, and he just thinks this is great. You guys are going to get along great. Like a mom introducing two sons on the playground, insisting yeah. they're going to be friends one day. He and I look at our shoes. I was like, your wife has seen my business, so you and I might not get along because I don't know how she lies next to you at night knowing what's next door. I'm just kidding. They're very nice people. And that was a weird comment. Well, that's what it is. <laughs> There's, I don't know how it could get more awkward unless they no. discover the tunnel that links our houses together. I've been digging. <laughs> the only experience similar to that that I had is at my place. Like, you know where I live. Yeah. And one time in a matter of probably two hours, Jay pulled up to my house to drop something off in the nation truck. And then Jared in the old, his old whip pulled up to drop something mm -hmm. off of my house within back to back of each other. All of a sudden my neighbor, this was last summer, I think my neighbor just pokes his head over the house. He's like, the fuck's going on over there? I'm winning a lot of contests. Yeah. Fair enough. Get the giant nation truck pulling in. It draws attention. You can see it from space. Um, I have is... a very checkered history on my block. I'm not <laughs> highly regarded by the other residents. <laughs> I used to live on the corner, and then I moved up the street. I ran into somebody on the sidewalk once. They're like, oh, we thought you'd moved. I was You're like, no, like... I did move just up the street, and they were so disappointed. I was like, Fuck. oh. And sometimes it's a very small world, too, because you once told a story. This was years ago now in real life about how you had a neighbor complaining that you and Jay didn't mow the lawn at your house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy ended up selling me a car. Do you remember? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a red Civic. We can talk about it after, but that was your neighbor. It's just very small world shit sometimes. Yeah, we got in a lot of shit for a lot of stuff. The way, like, where my condo is, across the street is another condo at eye level, and the person or people who live there always have their window open in their living room so i can see what they're watching on tv 24 7 are they getting if, it on all the but, time yeah so I like ask. but the, no i don't see that but the oh. way it works is like so it's my tv and then my window right next to the tv sees perfectly into their living room it's like you have two TVs? with their tv he's always watching the same shit as me he watched every alcs <laughs> nlcs game he watches every primetime nfl game every single oilers game if there's no oilers game on a saturday he has other hockey on and i don't even know what this guy looks like i just know his tv and I'm Damn. like, I know we'd get along. We'd have endless things to talk about. Part of me wants to go knock one day and be like, hey, man, you just want to come over. Wow. I feel like we're watching the game together fucking anyway. But he can't because he doesn't have that type of relationship with people because his dad's so distant. Mm. He can't bridge the gap with strangers. Absolutely. I could not do it. But you could because you hold hands with your dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Like you would. No. Yeah. You wouldn't do that. I'm, no, I'm weird and introverted. Yeah, I I, speak yeah, but you've everywhere. talked to strangers in the past. Sure, but how many cocktails have I had? Well, first? It took me like six months. There's one neighbor who I see every day outside because he's always like shoveling or tinkering in his garage and all this. It took me like six months to find the back. Hey, how's it going? Still don't know his name. We don't know each other's names. I flip the we script. Say I say hi to everybody like I'm the really? MLA. Oh, yeah. You're really good at it, though. Mm -hmm. It's the only Schmoozer. time I'm ever... Well, no, you no, no. If you reply to me, I'm out, but I'll say uh, hi. Okay. And hi. Hi. That's good enough. Well, I also have beef with if you say to somebody like a stranger, how you doing? And they actually go into how they're doing. Yeah. Like there's, there's I was no just being nice. Yeah. You can say fine or good or bad. And that's the end of the transaction. As far as I'm concerned. Fair enough. The room could be on fire. I could have a. Oh, bad. Open gun yeah. wound. How you doing? Yeah. Good. Good. You all yeah, pretty good. <laughs> you know, I saw consider. a guy with an open gun wound the other day. What? what? I'm fucking driving into here to do the pregame show yesterday. 
And my girlfriend's in the passenger seat because on the weekend, Caroline and I bring our significant others and we all hang out here before the pregame show. And we're driving, driving, and we're by kind of the, I think, it, uh, I won't say the shop name, but there's a shop name. Why, Robert Kraft would get mad at you? Exactly. Yeah, he owns it. I think and there's a guy, way. and I'm like, oh, that guy has his pants around his ankles. Isn't that weird? Oh, no. And then we get a little bit closer. and Did Cheddar Bob himself? Amber's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and I look, and he's got the bandage, like, in his hand peeled back, and there's just, like, a bloody area on his thigh. What the like, fuck? I was like, oh my God. This isn't in your precious St. Albert, was it? No, it was like five minutes from here. Oh, that's uh, better, Of course. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And your Amber was right like, to be worried. To Amber was like city. freaking out. And I was like, oh, we aren't in St. Albert anymore, Amber. My exact words. No like, that shit happens, I guess. I guess. But this guy, it's like minus 20. And he's got his pants around his ankles <laughs> with like blood and a big bandage. And Amber's like, we need to call someone. Oh, and I'm like, we can't call anyone. I looked like he'd been to the hospital. Where else would he have gotten all those bandages? I don't know. It was very upsetting. It's a tough one driving downtown right now because there's a lot of folks. That I think a lot. Of, they're yeah. not faking it. They no. need help. And we got to decide as a society, like, how do we want to help people like this? I don't think we do enough. I think it's a really complicated problem. So should I have called someone? It's tough, I don't know man. what to do. It's not like if you'd called 911 that his life would have gone on a completely better arc, right? Like, chances are if you're already being checked out by medical staff, you're familiar with some level of social service to yeah. some degree. But there's just seemingly a lot of folks downtown are having a really fucking mm -hmm. hard time. And normally they're mixed in with civilians walking yeah, around, yeah, yeah, going to Earl's and living their lives. And now all those people are gone. Yeah. Hmm. Well. Anyways, it was very jarring to see. But hope that gentleman's okay, I guess. You know who is okay? Robert Kraft. Yeah. He owns the Patriots, man. He yeah. has a jet. So it is all good in Robert Kraft's world. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a joke that's not going to make the final cut of the podcast. But now yeah. there's like eight Robert Kraft <laughs> mentions yeah. mixed in throughout. Sure. So guess what the joke was and send us a DM and your M check will send you a prize. Yep. And if Jay listens to this and goes more needed to be edited out, Jay, I was outvoted. Well, you know what? As long as you feel comfortable putting this show out, I feel comfortable putting this show out. Jay approved all jokes for this show. Do you think Jay's Robert Kraft and he's listening to all the shows and you're going to get in trouble? No. What? Mm. No. Yeah. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyways. In uh, fact, I'd say you're lucky that Chalmers wasn't also here to double up on the Robert Kraft. He would have. Yeah. He would have. Yeah. You never get mad at Chalmers. You only get mad at me for being funny. <laughs> Uh, no, that's that's not true. I've I edit out probably just as much Chalmers as I do Wanya. Yeah, when I'm gonna get my own show, no one's gonna edit shit, and then it's gonna be canceled after one show. Did I tell I, you I'm launching my own podcast? That's why I need Tyler's help. What are you doing? I'm gonna do one that it's all most of it is user generated. We don't have anything like that. Go on. It's gonna be just me in my house. I'm gonna play buttons. I'm gonna have like on Oilers Nation Radio on Friday. I was sitting where you are. And I was touching all the I buttons remember. on the roadcaster, and Tyler was getting upset about it. That wasn't Oilers Nation Radio. That was Nation he did it on both podcasts. Oh, I see. He's yeah. learning how to work the pod. Yeah, pod. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to get my own one yeah, of those. Yeah. And I think that we've got some very clever people in the nation, citizens of the nation, that will go a lot to say. So I'm going to do an hour podcast by myself. So you're going to have them record like a rant. I'm going to have a voicemail set up. It's already done, actually. And we're gonna. I'm going to have sound effects. I'm going to play clips from stuff. We're just gonna have fun. It's gonna be shenanigans. That's dope. What's it called? Uh, better late than never. L A I T. That's smart. I like it. Mm -hmm. You get that? Better late than never. L A I T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Are you working through the joke? Well, I, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I have a new podcast. It's called "What Did Robert Kraft Do?" <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he had back pain. Before we go, he um, owns the Patriots. Before we go, our friends over at PointsBet, they are going to be Canada's sportsbook. And my bills are in action tonight, so I'm just going to tell everyone a very simple bills minus two and a half. Lock it in, baby. And uh, that is all. That is all I had to say. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the bills and a little bit about PointsBet. How's risky business going? Man, I got Cold. slaughtered yesterday. That's Hey, you, you win and die with the oil. Were you betting on the Utah Jazz? Yes. Yeah, your favorite. No, because risky business is all about betting with your heart, you know? Uh, jazz are all business and, and jazz. You, exactly. Mm -hmm. You see, Yeah. You see a game like the Kings on the schedule, you assume that the boys are going to come out pissed right off. How so do you I not? threw a couple of shekels. So did I. I thought the others it. were going to win. Well, they didn't. You win some, you lose some. Mm -hmm. And I lost. I lost real bad, Tyler. Where she goes. Anyway, shout out to points. <laughs> <laughs> you checked out of that one, eh? Yep. Yeah, whatever, bag milk, your life's a horrible mess. Anyways, points bet. Yep. 
Well, this was a good episode of the podcast. I think it was pretty good. I think it was excellent. I think it had, you know, some moments that were probably all edited Maybe out. we'll have the guys on from Mexico on uh, Thursday. Yes. Could not have that potential. And Did they when does question? better late than never start? Uh, I got to get the equipment first. New I was, Year? Uh, yeah. Yep. Because I was trying to figure it out how to do it from just my laptop. And Tyler's like, you fucking idiot. You mm. don't know anything. Mm-mm. Yes. Not so I need at all said. More, more or less. Could do it all from your laptop. I'm going to come in here and start recording my own podcast. I'm going to use all this stuff and just figure it out on the fly. See, I want to use all this stuff too, but like, I also easy. don't want to There's be... like gum in your one thing and that monitor is set to MySpace. And... I just, I, I want something that I can just do in my house. Mm-hmm. We'll figure it out. Are all you right. going to get different noises for all your buttons? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have a soundboard. I'm going to do all kinds of shit. Can you hit a... Murder. Hit another one. Robert Kraft. Yeah. <laughs> when is Oh, come on. I didn't even say We're any done. details. We're done. I'm ending it. <laughs> Episode 335 of the Real Life Podcast. It's over. <sighs> Thanks for listening to another episode of the Real Life Podcast. Don't want to miss any of our nonsense? Hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.